Hi everybody, this is Audrey, also known as Noble Strength, and welcome to my channel. And today you are tuned in for devotion time. I know it's been a while, but I am back and I'm here to encourage you through the word of God and share some personal testimonies that I think will help you. So today's lesson is going to be titled Embrace the Wilderness. Embrace the Wilderness. What? Are you crazy? Embrace the wilderness. You know, when you think about the wilderness, you think about challenging times. You think about adversity. You think about barrenness, dryness, feeling isolated and alone, probably down and depressed and weighted and overwhelmed. All of those things come to mind when you think of being in the wilderness, spiritually speaking, because I look at life as being on a spiritual journey. We're all going through life on our own little road, our journey journey that God has designed for us in order to make us better, in order to grow us, in order to make us new and, you know, to peel away those old layers and make us better people. And on these journeys, we have peaks and valleys and we have green pastures and we have wildernesses. And I feel like one minute you can be in a green pasture and then all of a sudden you're in a wilderness and you're like, what? happened? What is going on? Why am I here? And like I say, it can be overwhelming at times, but I am here to tell you and here to testify about the goodness of God, about how the wilderness is really for your good. Remember, God works all things for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So God is such an amazing God and a good God. And I'm just bubbling over with joy because he is, he never fails. He is faithful to the end. So in this lesson, these are some points that we're going to touch on and we're going to look at some scripture. Remember, the title is Embrace the Wilderness. So if you're feeling overwhelmed right now, if you're feeling like you're somewhere, you don't feel like you, you need to be there or you feel afraid or you feel alone, stick with me. So the first thing I want to tell you is that God will bless you in the wilderness. God is in the business of blessing. That is his nature. He is just a good God and his blessings rain down unapologetically in abundance each and every day of our lives just by him waking us up and us having the breath of life. So remember, God will bless you in the wilderness. Revelations can be revealed in the wilderness. There'll be times when you're in a, you know, dark, dry, barren place and those are the moments when revelations can come to you. And we're going to talk about that a little later and give some examples from the Bible. Another point is being in the wilderness can prepare you for your destiny. There's preparation when you're in the wilderness. You may not see it now. You, like I say, you may feel overwhelmed and wondering what is going on, but God is preparing you for your destiny. Another thing, sometimes you must go through the wilderness to get to your promise. And we'll talk about that too. And I bet you're already thinking about a story that I'm thinking about in the Bible. It relates to Moses and the Israelites. Another thing is the wilderness can be a test. Sometimes it's a test. Tests are good things. Test challenge to see if we have learned what we need to learn to move on to the next thing. Also, the wilderness is a faith builder. You know, it's impossible to please God without faith. So he's going to be always trying to develop that faith in us through circumstances in our life. Another thing, the wilderness can equip you. The wilderness, like, you know, being in a gym and working out is getting you stronger, is building those muscles and getting you ready to perform something that you probably could not have performed had you not developed those muscles. So the wilderness will equip you. The wilderness can reveal who you are in Christ. Sometimes we don't even know who we are until we've gone through some things. We don't know the strength that we have in Christ until we've gone through some things. We've got to go through the fire sometimes. So the wilderness can also draw you closer to God. You know, a lot of times we kind of get independent. Like, you know, we get so self-sufficient. We almost at times forget about God. 
you know, I'm not saying all of us do, but at some point in our lives, we get in a place where we get complacent and, and maybe we don't think about God enough, but the wilderness can draw you closer to God. Another thing, when you're in the wilderness, remember you're in good company because there are a lot of other men and women of faith in the Bible who were in the wilderness. If you're a child of God, I guarantee you, you're going to go through a few wilderness type places. And don't be afraid of the wilderness because God is always there. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. And God just downloaded all of this into my spirit as I was reading his word. And he just gave me these lists of wonderful things. And he was saying, Audrey, share this with your sisters and brothers in Christ, that we should, they should embrace the wilderness, embrace it. You know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So even in those difficult times, God is with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Don't be afraid. He's the great encourager. He's always said, lo, I am with you always, always. And there are provisions in the wilderness. You will find that in the stories that I'm going to share with you today, that God always provided the necessary things for those who were in the wilderness. And another thing, in the wilderness, you will not remain. Remember that everything is only temporary. Life is full of changes and ebbs and flows. So you won't remain where you are. Remember that. Have hope, have faith, be encouraged through this message. Okay, so let me go ahead and give you the definition of wilderness. Wilderness is an uncultivated, uninhabited, and inhospitable region. That doesn't sound very inviting. So when you think of the wilderness, you don't think of anything inviting. You think of something that, hmm, I don't know what's out there. There could be all kind of, you know, wild things lurking around. I'm afraid, I'm nervous, you know, that is what you think of when you think about the wilderness, uncultivated. You don't have the things that you need or that you feel you need. You feel alone. You feel isolated. So let's talk about some people who faced some challenges in the wilderness. One that comes to mind is Cain. Now, sometimes our wilderness can be brought on by sins in our life, choices that we make. We can put our own selves in a wilderness through sin, living a sinful life. And Cain is a perfect example. And God expelled him from the land that he was in after killing his brother Abel. And the first response, Cain was afraid. He was like, I'm going to be marked. People are going to know I was a murderer and they're going to want to kill me. But look how merciful God was. And guess what? God blessed Cain isn't God amazing? He blessed Cain. He was like, no man will kill you. If they do, you know, they're going to get what's coming to them seven times over. So God protected Cain, even though he was cast out of the land that he was in and he was cast out of the presence of God, God still blessed him. Another thing that comes to mind is the story of Moses. Now, Moses you know, was adopted by, I believe it was Pharaoh's daughter, if I'm not mistaken, but he, uh, he was taken in. So he was living a princely life in Egypt. But then when he saw the oppression of his people, he wanted to help and he ended up murdering a man and he did not know someone had seen him. And when he found out, he fled into the wilderness. Well, it was during that time that God began preparing him for a greater call on his life, what he was destined to do. And that was to lead his people out of bondage. But it was during that time when he fled into the wilderness that he uh, met his father-in-law, Jethro and married his daughter Sarah and they you know began building their family so they lived a normal life and then one day God appeared to Moses in a burning bush and said I want you to lead my people out of Egypt and what was Moses reaction uh, not me Lord not me but see it's in the wilderness that God called out to Moses and told him what his destiny was. So just remember, sometimes you have to go through things to find out where God is taking you. Now, once, you know, 
Moses went on his mission, he led the people out of Egypt into the what? The wilderness. Now, it was only supposed to be a three-day trip, but it turned into 40 years, 40 long years in the wilderness. But once again, sin was the thing that extended their stay in the wilderness. So sometimes we prolong our stay in the wilderness. Yes, we're to embrace the wilderness because many good things happen in the wilderness, but we're not meant to stay there. And they were not meant to stay there as long as they did, but it was their complaining, their murmuring, and their unbelief that kept them there. So remember that your sin, your complaining, your murmuring, your unbelief can keep you where you are. So if you're at a pity party right now because you're in the wilderness, I say, wake up, get out of that pity party. Don't stay there. Don't linger there. Get yourself up, start giving God praise, start giving him thanks, start being grateful for the challenges that you're facing, even though they are difficult. All right, so another thing that comes to mind is John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist was, he was like the, the trumpet sounder for Christ, the, the coming of Christ in his ministry. It says that he was a voice in the wilderness crying out. So sometimes when you're in the wilderness, that's when you hear from God. You get a message from God. God is giving you some type of an assignment or a message. He's, you know, trumpeting the way for what is to come when you're in the wilderness. Remember that. All right, let's take a look at some scriptures. I touched on all these stories. Uh, I first touched on the story of Cain. So let's take a look at Genesis 4.14. This is the story about Cain. Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on earth. It will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain lest anyone finding him should kill him. So like I said earlier, sometimes your sin can, you know, lead you into the wilderness, but God is a loving, caring, faithful, merciful God. And he could have very well killed Cain for killing his brother, but he didn't. He allowed Cain to live on, to have a family and all of that. But he still had that reminder because of that mark that God put on him of his sinful deeds. So sometimes, you know, God, he's merciful, but we still have to live with the consequences of the choices we make. So like I say, sometimes your own sin can lead you in the wilderness. So you may have to reflect and ask, what have I done that has led me in the wilderness and repent of those sins? And God is merciful to forgive. All right. So let's look at the next scripture, Exodus, Exodus 15, 22. Exodus 15 and 22. All right, so it says, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Marah. And the people complained against Moses saying, what shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet and they were able to drink. So we see here that even in the wilderness, when it looked like there, they were gonna die and there was you know, no food, no water, no drink, all they had to do was cry out to the Lord and he provided for them. So just remember though, you know, times may look bleak and dark. All you have to do is cry out to God. He's a cry out away to, you know, your prayers being answered and your provisions being met. Let's look at Isaiah 40, three through five, verse three. So this is in Isaiah and this is a prophecy. He was prophesying of, you know, something that was coming in the future of Jesus, the coming of the Messiah. It says, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for your God. 
Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. So like I said, in the wilderness, it is that those times where God will reveal himself to you. And this was prophesied long before John the Baptist said what he said in Matthew, Matthew 3, 1 through 4. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand for this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, which we just read. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John himself was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. So sometimes when we're in the wilderness, it can be a time of, like I say, hearing from God and getting a message that resonates with you where you are giving your life to God. Maybe you're in a dark place now. Maybe you haven't given your life to God. Now is the time. Now is the time to cry out to God and give him your heart. Repent of your sins. That's what this wilderness is for, for those of you who may be in that place. All right, let's look at Matthew 4, 1 through 11. Now, we should always be looking to our perfect example, and that is Jesus Christ. So even he had to go through his own places of being in the wilderness. Let's take a look. Matthew 4, 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterwards, he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, Command these stones to become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Let's go ahead and read on. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus said to him, It is written, again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And then the third temptation came. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. And that was the beginning of Christ's ministry. All of that had to happen before his ministry began. So remember when I said sometimes the wilderness can lead you into your destiny and sometimes the wilderness can prepare you for what you are called to do? That's exactly the perfect example that we have here. And sometimes it's the Holy Spirit that will lead you into your wilderness so that you can be prepared for where he is taking you. And I love this story. So in the wilderness, when Satan came because, you know, Satan will come. What did he do? He spoke the word of God. So when you're in your wilderness and you're feeling a certain way and you're being attacked in your mind with these voices and these negative thoughts, speak the word of God. Not once, not twice, three times or more. Speak the word of God as much as you need to until the devil leaves you and then you're out of your wilderness. And I just want to say that I've been through my wilderness in my life. I've been through many that I could say. And one of them was when I was transitioning from one job to another. I was working as a curator. I was loving my job. It was cush, cush. I was 
probably very comfortable, but God doesn't want us to stay comfortable. And sometimes he will shake us up and sometimes he will put urgings in us to move us to somewhere else. And you know, he, he I can't tell the whole story because I don't want to make this you know, video too long, but it's a good story. Everything that God does is good, but I'm going to wrap it up quickly for you. I felt a leading just like Abraham felt a leading to God said, leave your land and go elsewhere. There's so many examples where God is saying, do this. When God came to Moses in the burning bush and said, you're going to do this. God will come to you suddenly with a sudden command or a sudden, you know, urging when your spirit to lead you somewhere else and you're like uh, what because what, what? it's all of a sudden that's how God works and I was led into a wilderness a somewhat of a wilderness when I went into an inner city school to teach it was difficult it was challenging it was the first time that I learned about spiritual warfare I had things coming at me left and right and I had to fight I had to fight through the word but you know what? It strengthened me. It built my faith. It renewed my hope. It, it just made me a stronger child of God, a stronger ambassador for Christ, a stronger warrior. So you're in the wilderness. Embrace it. There are a lot of good things that come with being in the wilderness. So uh, that is my message for today. And I want to wrap up by saying that, you know, yeah, the wilderness is a challenging environment, but don't let the challenges of the wilderness overshadow the good work God is doing. Remember that. Don't let the challenges, the disappointments, the, you know, the hard times, overshadow the good work that is being done while you're in the wilderness. And remember, you don't have to stay there very long. Ask God, what is it you're trying to show me in this time, Lord? Let me learn it. Let me learn it quickly so I don't prolong being in the wilderness like the Israelites did. And another thing too, I remember, you remember the story of Hagar? Uh, she was the, um, the servant girl that uh, Sarah told Abraham to sleep with because, you know, they felt like this is the only way we're going to get a child. And when she had that child, Sarah started, you know, she got a little, I guess, prideful. And then, you know, Sarah was like, uh -uh, I'm not having that. And she started to treat her badly and Hagar ran away. And it was when Hagar was in the wilderness that God looked down on her. Remember, God sits high and looks low. He sees everything. He saw the abuse that, you know, she was having and the mistreatment that she was giving and the rejection that she felt. That's why it caused her to run away. But God, you know, looked down on her and he was like, Hagar, don't run away. Go back and be submissive to, you know, Sarah. And she did that. And, you know, eventually, you know, her and her son, Ishmael, had to leave. But God had mercy on her when she was in the wilderness. And even when they left, I remember, remember when they were without water, but God provided water for Hagar and him. And she and he blessed Ishmael and his, you know, descendants greatly. So God is a merciful God. He's always there, even in the wilderness. So embrace the wilderness. Well, that is my devotion for today. I hope you found it encouraging. And I hope those points of all the good things that take place in the wilderness has uplifted your spirit if you were down. And like I say, we've all been there. I've been through my wildernesses. I've been through more than one. <laughs> but God was faithful. I was blessed on that job that was difficult and challenging to me. Some of my best blessings came during the most challenging time in my life. So I want to close with prayer. Most holy and righteous Father God, thank you so much for this wonderful day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that teaches us all things that are true and good and according to your word. Lord, we love you. And Father God, we just want to embrace the wilderness that we are in, whatever it may be, whatever the challenges are. And Lord, 
There's so many other great men and women of God who were in their wilderness. King David, when he had to flee from Saul, he was in his wilderness in caves and mountains running. But you were preparing him, Lord God, for his kingship, just as though you're preparing us, Lord God, for what is to come. And I'm not just talking about in an earthly sense, but I'm talking about in a heavenly sense where we will reign with you, Lord God. So thank you for this time of preparation because our whole life is somewhat of a wilderness because this is not our home. We have a better home with you, Lord God. So we just thank you for what you are teaching us here now on this earth, Father God. Let us not be grumblers and complainers like the Israelites, Lord God, and prolong ourselves being in a wilderness, Lord God. Help us to just be grateful and help us to cry out to you, Lord God, because we know you're faithful. We know that you love us. We know that you're waiting, Lord God, to pour out your blessings upon us, just as you did with Hagar. And we thank you. I remember the story of Elijah in the Bible when he was running from Jezebel and he ran into the wilderness and it was there that you spoke to him and reminded him and encouraged him that he was not alone. So though you're feeling alone in the wilderness, remember you are not alone. There are many other faithful servants of God, men and women of God who've been where you are and who've made it through. And it was because of God. And let us not forget the one that we should always be looking to, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We must fight with the word of God. We must speak the word of God when the enemy attacks us in the wilderness. So Lord, thank you for the wilderness. Thank you, Lord God, for making us stronger. Thank you for increasing our faith, Lord God. And I just want to pray for all my listeners, Lord God, who may be feeling overwhelmed and down while they're in the wilderness. I pray that they, their spirit will be encouraged, Lord God, through this message, that this message will be life-giving to them and strengthening to their bones, Lord God, and their spirit. May those dead bones rise up and rejoice and give praise to your holy name for what you are doing in the wilderness. Thank you, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. I love you guys. Embrace the wilderness and remember to be a good steward of all that God has given you because he loves us so much. I love you too. And I will see you next time. Bye.